G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be taking out the trash of those 9.7 and 10.3 premiums that are absolutely terrorizing rank six at the moment with the beautiful F8E Crusader. This plane is really, really good, and it sort of takes off the back of the F8U2 and adds a couple of extra little spicy things. One of those spicy things being the AIM-9Cs. Now, I'm not using the 9Cs here because I'd like to go with the IR spiciness, but what we're doing here is essentially taking the 9Ds and uh, roaming around to try and make ourselves as effective as possible at those higher altitudes where the AIM-9Ds are most effective. And of course, what lives at altitude? Nothing but MiG-21s and A5Cs. And that's the first piece of trash we're gonna be taking out today. But of course, uh, we have a fair amount of other things that we are able to do. This plane has excellent flight performance. It's decently fast. It tops out at around 1200 kilometers per hour, but it climbs really well. And it also dogfights really well. This plane has really good dogfighting capabilities, but mostly at the lower or at the higher altitudes. And that's kind of what we're going to abuse here. Um, I find that the larger wing area on the F8 Crusader tends to allow it to do better against things like MiG-21s at that higher altitude. You might end up losing to other things that might have a bit of uh, higher acceleration, but for the most part, you're pretty good. And of course, at that lower altitude, you can always start dogfighting things uh, pretty much all the way up to the F5s. You won't really be able to dogfight the F5C. Uh, you'll definitely struggle with the F5E, uh, but everything else can sort of become fair game, especially considering that you can put this plane down to some very low speeds and still get a little bit out of it. Of course, we have a, uh, I don't know what to call this thing, the, the tilting wing of, of sorts. Uh, but we don't really use that. It's only really for landing and the combat flaps are all we really need here. Bit of combat flaps, couple of flares, an afterburner, some 20 mils and some AIM 9Ds is all we need to take out the trash. Now, of course, as you saw at the beginning of the match, I am up against 11.0s and this is actually quite fair for the F8 Crusader. It is a really, really strong plane. It's something that definitely deserves its 10.3 spot. And honestly, if it didn't have to face F-14s, if there were other planes at that matchmaker, if it was a bit more balanced, again, I am working on my battle, battle rating video, so that will come soon, uh, but I have a couple of things that I need to line up first. Uh, this plane is a very strong 10.3, and uh, one of the things that it, it is the only thing to hold it back is the fact that it doesn't have RWR. And this leaves it susceptible to AIM-7s or any semi-active radar homing missiles. But, you know, we don't really bother about that here. We just sort of put our Chad face on and go and do it. We just go, get kill, and survive. Because this plane is an absolute mega Chad. In fact, I would almost consider it to be a giga Chad. And what we're going to do here is take our first piece of garbage out with the A5 going for a very long range AIM-9D. And the AIM-9D, you might think, is a little bit worse in terms of perhaps range or anything. You might even consider it a downgrade from the AIM-9E, but it actually does have the range. It's got a very long burn time. So you, at higher altitudes at the very least, can get a lot of range on this thing. It's probably got longer range at high altitude than a missile like the AIM-9J. So you have plenty of options for high altitude combat. And that's why I've gone up to 6,000 meters. Despite this plane being a fairly decent dogfighter, I think high altitude is best altitude for this plane because not only are you able to exploit that altitude advantage, but you're also able to just sort of generally deal with planes a little bit better. We're gonna go for the G91 there, and the Jaguar is next. This might be a little ambitious on the Jaguar. We'll see how we go. And it looks like it's gonna strike barely, barely misses there. I think he flares at the last second. Of course, the AIM-9D is highly susceptible to the good old flare and afterburner off thingy. So we're just gonna dive on the Jaguar. The Jaguar, uh, I believe he can pull into me because he's got better AOA, but if he's pitching up, he's bleeding a lot of speed and basically turning his plane into a turd. And now I've turned his plane into a repair cost. So we have one enemy down there that is via guns and the rest are pretty much all gun uh, missile jobs. And you know, that does ring true to the last gunfighter in reality, Despite this thing being designed for gunfighting, it actually supposedly received all of its kills, or at least the vast majority via missiles. So, you know, we're, we're kind of playing the role here. We're, we're LARPing a little bit, but you know what? As long as we get the kills, and of course, as long as we take out that trash. 
you will see a little bit more uh, sort of trash taking out in this video. I've got four matches lined up for you. And of course, they're all from different up tiers and down tiers. So uh, we, we can't really cherry pick and say, well, you know, you, you cherry pick the good matches or no. We're having a look at the whole spectrum here because this thing is an absolute beast in an up tier and it is also a beast, of course, in a down tier. Now, this F-104 is zooming in the foreign off in front of us and we're going to cut the afterburner, go for a little bit of a turn, bleed a little bit of speed and try and slot in behind him. I don't even think he realizes that we're here, uh, but e either way, I would consider him to be pretty much boned. He is not really going to do a whole lot here. If he's got flares, he's got flares, good on him. But honestly, it is pretty much over and done for the F-104, who tries to put himself into the ground. Very nice indeed. But that's four quick and easy dirty kills. And that's kind of what you're going to be aiming for here in the Corsair. In, in the Corsair? Crusader. The Corsair is the A7. Uh, but re regardless, the F-8 is an absolute beast. We're going to move on to our second match here. And we are coming up against the MiG-21. Uh, he's looking very juicy, but avoids us at the last second. Uh, I have... <laughs> Another MiG-21 SMT where it has received a missile. As you can see, I've, I've cut the footage a little short, but it doesn't matter. We're taking out uh, one MiG-21 SMT there. There is an Su-25 Frogfoot in the distance. That is the next piece of trash that we should be taking out. And of course, we have the third piece of trash in front of us there being the A-10. These planes are wildly under-tiered for the missiles that they carry, but of course, the Crusader is able to deal with them all. Going on that, uh, as the namesake, sort of requires a, a holy crusade to uh, rid the matchmaker of infidels. And here we go. Su-25 is kind of now within missile range, and it's, uh, you know, the aspect is a little bit funny. I'm going to try and sneak in behind him, and there we go. We're going to let it rip, and off it goes. The AIM-9D providing me with the juice. Here we go. Another kill there on the Su-25K. I don't feel bad at all taking these things out. And of course, one of them is going to pitch up to me because that's kind of the smart thing that you would do in this particular plane. But a bit of flaring does mitigate that very, very easily. So we're going to go over and the Su-25 is pretty much energy trapped, meaning that even if he wanted to, he couldn't get away. He couldn't fight. He'll just end up having to try and survive and eventually die. The Mirage 3E is coming in nice and hot. And the Su-25 being energy trapped is unable to really do much about me. So it's kind of down to my aim or lack thereof that doesn't result in his death. Now, I've got a lot of enemies on my 6 here. And there is another piece of trash coming in by the A5C. I've got to put the nose down, get a little bit of speed, and try and get some separation. Because I'm pretty confident that I can... Uh, you know, move away from the uh, Su-25, uh, but my confidence is quite low in the MiG-21 SMT, so I'm going to take out the Ariete instead because he's an easy target and he's flown in front of my guns, but I can also put the A-10s to work now because there are three of them, or two of them, a Harrier and an AV-8 that are, you know, just fixating on an Ariete and failing to kill it. So in this case, I'm just going to step in, do the work like a man should, and let the uh, let the children fight over the toys in the form of the Mirage and the uh, SMT there. The Mirage gets a missile. The A5 is looking very juicy, so I'm going to try and slot in behind him. Uh, and of course, being an A5, he's basically a MiG-19 without the ability to turn. So we have a little bit of an advantage here in a dogfight, but I have to be sure that the SMT is not going to come back and missile me. He looks like the A5 is going to be turning. I'm going to put out some long-range bursts here, and as we get into gun range, it is looking super juicy. And just as the SMT comes in, I move out of the way, and the A5 is pretty much right for the killing, because there's nothing left. The A5 is not a particularly good dogfighting machine, especially with the afterburners on. You absolutely need to, like, use after uh, air brakes and switch off your afterburner. But you know what? That's pretty much all she wrote there. Some quick and dirty kills, and I pretty much get nothing else from that match. Now, you might be thinking that this plane is only good in a down tier, judging by the footage, but we have an F-14A here. And you know what? I thought one of the benefits of this plane is it doesn't have to fight the F-14, but of course, you do get the occasional, and I, I say occasional, but it's pretty much, you know, every third up tier is a, uh, is a game against F-14s. So you are going to be pulling your hair out every now and then. But you know what, that's that's okay, because this thing can deal with that. You don't have the uh, RWR to, to worry you about needless things like AIM-54 Phoenixes and AIM-7s coming in. You just don't need that, that sort of uh, that trouble in your life. You just go about your day, 
getting kills and not worrying. And I don't know why, but I tend to die less to missiles in this thing than I do in my top tier jets with RWR. Uh, it's just bizarre. It has a real Chad effect on this plane. Uh, maybe there's a psychological effect that uh, means that I'm less afraid of these missiles and just sort of charge headlong with, uh, you know, pleasing results. But it's kind of the way it is with this plane and I don't see a problem because this plane is an absolute monster. Speaking of monsters, the A-10A is right there, deserving a 9D, especially with all those flares and deciding not to flare. Uh, the F-4EJ is also looking fairly juicy and has just come within missile range here, so I'm going to let one go there for the F-4EJ, but it doesn't land home, so I'm going to just send another one very quickly. And because the F-4EJ isn't paying attention, he will eventually pay a repair cost. There we go with kill number, I think it's three. The Kfir is coming in as well, chasing a friendly, so I'm going to take out the trash again with the Kfir and get myself kill number four here. The Kfir C2, it's an event plane, it's basically a shitty mirage, and the shitty mirage gets a pretty sort of underwhelming kill there, but it's alright. He's not paying attention, so he pays the repair costs. Now this last guy, MiG-23, coming in, goes under my guns, and that's fine because he's just going to be absolutely mongoloided by the... Uh, F5C. So we have a nice quick and dirty match here. This MiG-23 is the last guy left. Uh, he he's, he's bombing, so he's clearly the best player in the game. And the MiG-23 will soon meet its fate at the hands of either an A10 or the other F8 here. It's looking pretty juicy. Uh, not really. And as he comes by, miss my guns. But it's fine. There's so many enemies left that even the F4J is able to step in and get a few shots down range. Plenty of missiles going this guy's way, and the F4J eventually gets the kill. This plane is relegated to a support fighter role at this battle rating. There's no doubt about it. You can't go and pick fights like 1v5 at uh, top tier. You just can't. It's just this plane is not capable enough to do that. But if you have the ability to be a support fighter, this plane pops off. There is just no shred of a doubt about it. Those AIM-9Ds are good for long range. You come in from above or you come in from altitude where you, your opponents aren't looking or where they're focused on something else and you just get easy kills. And then anything that's left, you can dogfight. That's the beauty of this plane. It is just so goddamn easy to fly. Now MiG-21 here is looking super juicy, not paying attention. AV-8 also not paying attention. And there's an Su-25 above me, but on the radar, he's kind of gone away. So I'm going to treat him as uh, not really important. The AV-8 gets a nice little critical hit and there's another AV-8 that is looking super juicy as well, but he might pop up and meet me and, and uh, say hi as such. So I'm going to turn around and give him a little what for. It looks like he's going to pop up and he dies just before he gets within gun range, which is fine because I'm happy that the AV-8 is dead. Of course, you might just hear me hating on these premiums and, and think about it being somewhat needless, but uh, I do see an issue with certain amounts of premiums or certain, uh, certain qualities of certain aircraft with such powerful missiles. I do take issue with it because it does throw out the other planes at that battle rating. And of course, you might buy these planes. And if you're just looking to quickly and dirtily grind out a tech tree, this is a good plane to do it in. But it doesn't teach you anything. So it makes you a bad pilot when you actually get to the, the, the regular tech tree planes because you, do, you haven't learned anything. You don't know how to dogfight. You don't know the quirks of each battle rating. You just sort of pick a plane and uh, try and use the missiles and then fail, which is what a lot of the, the players that I find at top tier end up doing because they've just trained, if you will, on ground attacker aircraft that don't really have a place being as powerful as they are. And then when you finally have the training wheels taken off, you end up sucking because you just don't have that level of hand holding with any other aircraft. And I find it to be really shit for, for new players and really shit for existing players who want to play tech tree planes um, particularly like myself as a content creator who's looking to play a, a variety of aircraft, uh, my best interest, of course, apart from having a really good matchmaker for everyone to play, is to have a lot of aircraft that you can pick and play and enjoy. And this battle rating has just been absolutely void of that because there are just no competitive planes that are not either premiums or otherwise overpowered or under-tiered. And it really sucks because it just drains the matchmaker and ruins it for everyone. I, I have to work on this battle rating video, but I'm waiting for a couple of stars to align, uh, and you'll see that in the coming weeks, but I definitely think that there should be a large overhaul of the battle ratings. But in the meantime, 
the F8 Crusader is at that top of that area, it's able to compete in so many different ways that it is just kind of immune to this sort of stuff. It's very versatile and it's very strong because it just has so many tricks up its sleeve that you can adapt to the situation. And a plane like the English Electric Lightning is unable to do that. The MiG-19 is unable to do that. The Jaguar, despite being a ground attacker and, you know, not really meant to be an ace flyer, it's also incapable of that sort of thing. So you take a look at all of these planes and then you see the Su-25s with R-60Ms. You see the A-10s with AIM-9Ls. And then you see the A-5C with ridiculous performance and Matra Magics. And you just go, well, why should I even play a 9.7 or a 9.3? Uh, or even other 10.0s. Uh, why would I bother playing the F1 when I don't have flares and everyone has an R60M? There are certain planes that just plain old suck. And that's because of these sort of premiums. And I'm, I'm happy to fly a plane that absolutely roasts the lot of them because they have one thing that cannot be sort of, it cannot be superseded. You can flare missiles. You can, you know, not put yourself in front of an enemy's uh, Vulcan cannon or, or 30 mil, but you can't out dogfight someone in a plane that is not built for dogfighting. And that is where the F8 Crusader makes its mark on this matchmaker. It's so fun because it's immune to these changes. It's immune to this cancer of a battle rating. And it, it's a plane for everyone. Of course, if you can stomach the repair cost. So ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, if you would like to support the channel, head down to the link in the description below. I have pretty much everything from merch, uh, Patreon, all of that sort of stuff. I really appreciate any financial support because it really means a lot to me. But thank you very much for watching. That's the most important thing. Take care and I'll catch you next time.